so there should be one. Yeah, okay, so we, we, we picked one. Okay. Uh, this, this, if you don't like it, you can do it in a different way. Uh, we pick one, which uh, you see that we put the uh, negation down from, from the connective. So there is no not not in front. So this is why we need this PRFC. Okay, but uh, okay, we should go to a to an ecumenical logic conference to discuss this this this, uh, this issue. So we we just pick one, but any 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 could, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so now imagine, uh, for, for some reason, you, you prefer to work in type theory rather than in uh, predicate logic. Maybe it is a case of uh, some people in this room. So let's see how you can go one step further and uh, first uh, express proofs coming from simple type theory. So simple type theory is also called higher order logic, except that it's not a logic, it's a theory. So we should not call it a logic, we should call it a theory, and it has a name which is simple type theory. And it is implemented in uh, Hall 4, Hall Light, uh, Isabel Hall, and so on. So I don't know why these names, uh, maybe it's uh, related to uh, the other name of simple type theory. But uh, now, uh, what if we want to express proofs coming, let's say, from uh, Hall Light or Isabel Hall? Okay. In fact, uh, you just need to add uh, two ideas. The first one is that propositions are objects, Okay, so you know that in a simple type theory, uh, you can quantify on propositions in particular. And the, the other idea is that instead of having just one or two or three uh, sorts, you want to have an infinite number of sorts, and your sorts will be generated by a grammar uh, whose main symbol is the arrow, the arrow, the functional arrow. So in, uh, in predicate logic, you have, uh, let's say, uh, in arithmetic, you have uh, terms expressing natural numbers. In higher order uh, arithmetic, I mean in a simple type theory with the axiom of arithmetic, uh, you, have, uh, you have also functions mapping natural numbers to natural numbers and so on. And to generate these uh, symbols, uh, uh, to, to, to give a type to these symbols, you, you, you have to introduce the functional arrow that is not in predicate logic. Uh, of course, as propositions are objects, you can quantify other, over uh, predicates, and predicates are just symbols mapping natural numbers to propositions. Okay, so it's, again, functionality. Okay, so we have two challenges, and we are going to do the first and then the second one. So to have propositions as objects, I already uh, gave you a hint about it. All you need to do is to introduce a code for uh, the set of uh, the type of propositions. So it is called uh, Omicron. Again, it's not a lowercase O, it's a lowercase Omicron. And then you have uh, another rewrite rule that tells you that uh, element, the elements of Omicron, of course, nothing has the type Omicron for the same reason that nothing has the type IOTA, because Omicron is of type set and not of type type, so it's not itself a type. But you can map uh, with the same symbol uh, element uh, Omicron to uh, a type, and then this type, you want it to be equal to prop. Okay, so here you have a little exercise. If you apply a for all to Omicron, so you, you remember the type of for all? It took a X, and then uh, it took a function from element of X to prop, and then it returns a prop. Okay, now when you apply it to O, to Omicron, sorry, you get uh, element of Omicron, arrow prop, arrow prop. But of course, element of Omicron is the same thing as prop. So this term also has the type prop, arrow prop, arrow prop. Now you can apply it to a function mapping proposition to propositions, and you abstract X. So this means, in fact, you're quantifying over X, and then you have here the proposition X arrow X. And this is the way you express the proposition for x, x, r, x. And of course, if you had to write it by hand, it would be a nightmare, because you have all these uh, uh, elements and uh, reductions and so on. But this is not what deductee is meant for. You can take a proof coming from whole light, and then you translate it in this way. And then you have other pieces of software that are going to transform it to see if you can uh, redu express it in a, in a simpler theory. Or, so uh, even if you cannot read it, 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 it's OK. It's assembly code. Assembly code. It's not meant to be read. It's meant to be executed, uh, transformed, optimized, whatever, but not read. 
It's really a piece of software that talks to other pieces of software. There is no user needed here. Okay, then uh, we have this proposition uh, for all x, x implies x. And of course, if we ask for the proofs of this, it is a type. And now this will reduce with two, the two rules we have seen, the so-called Curie-Howard isomorphism, reducing proof of for all and then proof of implication. And you get that this reduces to uh, pi x prop, proof of x, arrow proof of x. And then you have this term, lambda x, lambda y, y, the identity, the polymorphic identity, which is the proof, the proof of it. Okay, so you, you, you should be convinced that if you can do this example, that you can do the full simple type theory. Uh, but not, not yet, because we don't have the arrow. And the arrow here, uh, the functional arrow, we just introduced a new uh, symbol which has type set, arrow set, arrow set. And now you see that because we have this symbol, we have an infinite number of elements in sets. We have iota, iota, arrow, iota, iota, arrow, iota, arrow, iota, and so on. And, and then you have this um, uh, rewrite rule that tells you what the meaning, what is the meaning of this code. So this, the elements of these are functions from the elements of x to the element of y. Okay, so when we had this, we were happy because we had Church's uh, simple type theory as defined in uh, Church's paper uh, in 1940. But uh, when we tried to see uh, how we could translate the proofs coming from uh, uh, Hall 4, Hall Light, uh, Isabel Hall, and so on, uh, we were a little bit disappointed because uh, in these systems, they do not really implement what they pretend they implement, but they have a polymorphic version of, uh, of um, simple type theory. So to, in fact, you have uh, object level uh, Prenex polymorphism. Uh, which is, in fact, uh, two different uh, features. The first one is the possibility to quantify over a type variable in a type. So you have, for instance, here uh, the uh, nil, uh, the empty list that has this type. And then another uh, issue, which is completely different, is to be able to quantify over a type in a proposition. Okay, so you, you need to do uh, these two things. And you can do that in deductive, and it takes less than a slide. So you define a type of schemes, and the schemes are the quantified types, the types with a quantifier. You have an injection from the types to the schemes, so this is this arrow from set to scheme. You have this uh, quantifier, a new quantifier that has nothing to do with the previous one, which allows to quantify over a, a variable of type set in a scheme. So Watch out, you cannot quantify over a scheme variable in a scheme because this would not be prenex. You can quantify over a type variable in a scheme. Uh, then you have the uh, decoding function from schemes, and it is exactly what, uh, what you can think of. And this is uh, the uh, quantifier to quantify over a, scheme uh, over a set variable in prop. Okay. Yes. Yes. The last one is this one that you use to quantify over a type variable in a proposition, not in a type. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, sorry. Yes? I'm, I'm okay. So you want me to start from the beginning? Okay, so uh, this for all x list of x, it is a scheme. List of x is a set, and then you can quantify over a set variable in a scheme, and you get another scheme. So here you have a set. You want to consider this set as a scheme with zero quantifiers. So you have this embedding, which is here, from set to scheme. So then you have a scheme, you abstract over the variable x, and you apply the for all quantifier here. So you have a function of type set arrow scheme because you have abstracted over this variable in a scheme, and when you apply this quantifier, you get a scheme. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. We, we should do an exercise here. Okay. Yeah. It's a good exercise to, to, to translate this, these two examples in this language. Okay, so, uh, so far we have seen only systems that you don't like, such as predicate logic and simple type theory. Now let's move to dependent type theory. After all, we are at a um, workshop of the types meeting. So um, wh what was wrong? What was wrong is that we had this uh, a row here that we used to build simple types. And of course, in simple type theory, you want simple types. But you see that this arrow does not allow for dependencies. And indeed, when you have an element of x arrow y, it reduces to element of x arrow element of y. This is in the theory. This is in the framework. And the rewrite, the long one. Yeah, and this is a rewrite. Okay, very good. Three yeah, okay, but, but it's very simple. This is in the language. This is in the framework, in the framework. This is a non-dependent product. This is the rewriting. Okay. Um, of course, when you write it on the, on the board, you have to disambiguate by yourself, but here it's uh, kind of clear. Okay, so now if you, want to make, if you want to make this arrow dependent, like in the lambda pi calculus or like in the calculus of constructions, well, just make it dependent. So instead of having set here, you have set, but you give a name to it. Instead of having set here, you have element of x arrow set because there is a dependency in the second argument. And then it returns a set, and the rewrite rule is almost the same, but you have a pi instead of an arrow, so no, 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 no risk to, to confuse. Uh, 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 and, and then you apply y to, to, to z, of course. Uh, okay. So again, uh, you might ask yourself, should I take the non-dependent arrow or should I take the dependent one? Uh, and of course, you can have both. And it's another. Uh, another illustration of e ecumenism. And it's even better. If you have um, a dependent arrow that in fact is not dependent, so you use the dependent arrow symbol, but you don't use the variable z in b, then you can replace it with the non-dependent arrow, and you write exactly in your proof that you this arrow was dependent because it came from a crazy system where you don't have non-dependent arrows, but only dependent arrows. But now you see in deducti that you don't use the dependency, so you can replace it with the non-dependent arrow. And replacing a dependent arrow that actually is not dependent with a non-dependent one, which is officially non-dependent, is a first step from translating proofs from Coq to whole light, for instance. Okay, so let's see how it works. You can have the same dependent implication, if you like. And you see that what we reach here is the calculus of constructions, because this arrow, when it's made dependent, the implication, it corresponds to this rule. Uh, this arrow, when it's made dependent, it corresponds to type constructors. Uh, the for all quantifier corresponds to uh, the uh, polymorphism. And you have here another symbol that you can introduce for uh, dependent types. So all the proofs that can be expressed in the calculus of constructions can be translated to deducti uh, in this uh, theory. And this is how uh, François Thierry reverse engineered the proofs coming from Matita. So in Matita, uh, Matita, uh, where is Claudio here? Okay. So Matita is one of these crazy systems where uh, all the arrows are dependent, uh, but it's not the only example, of course, there are many systems like this. So when you translate the proofs from Metita to Deducti, what you get, of course, is uh, the dependent symbols, implica dependent implication, dependent fu um, function uh, arrow, uh, and of course, the universal quantifier, and possibly this pi symbol. Okay. So then uh, Francois uh, wrote a piece of, um, of software just to, 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 to scan the proof, and each time, a dependent arrow or a dependent implication could be replaced by the non-dependent one. He did that. Eventually, uh, he noticed that the dependent symbols were not used anymore. So the proof was in uh, uh, simple type theory. Okay, maybe he will tell you tomorrow that it was a little bit more difficult than this. Uh, but it's almost it. Uh, this is really the idea that when you have an axiom 
a symbol that you don't use, well, you're in a simpler theory. Okay, so, um, but, yes? Before you go further, so, so can you explain the connection between, so if, if I define this squiggle independent arrow, do I yeah. need to do anything to tell that non-dependent one is a version of dependent, or, or it comes somehow... No. Or you just do, so, so how does it know that it, it has to be close in the same universe? No, it doesn't know. You, you know. So you know because you see that this rule is almost the same as this one here. Okay? So you can prove by yourself that if you, uh, if you use this rule, um, this, this one, if you use this one, and y here is a constant function. The z will disappear, so the pi z can be replaced by an arrow. What you get is element of x, arrow, element of y, or maybe y prime, the uh, constant value of the function. And, and then you say, okay, then I know that if I replace this with a non-dependent arrow uh, removing the lambda here, it will reduce to the same thing. So it's convertible. It is the same thing for, for, for deductive. But you have to be aware of that. Deductive will not tell you. And it's not, it's not a problem if you kind of you lose the constant function? Because, but okay, yeah, I guess it's just to be prepared. No, if it's not dependent, it's not a problem to lose the dependency. If it were dependent, of course, you don't want to do that. But, um, okay, so let's assume that, uh, uh, sorry. So it's two different issues. One issue is to take a proof from Matita to check it in deductive. Maybe you're, you're not very confident that Matita is correct. So you want to have a double check of your proof. And this is in particular what the uh, certification authority now want. For instance, take a system, a very complex system like uh, PBS. So some people write PBS proofs. And then uh, the certification authority the, uh, for um, air traffic control or whatever, uh, they want to, to check the proof. Okay, so we tell them uh, you, you should download PVS. But then they say, okay, if the same tool is used to develop the proof and to check the proof, uh, how can we be sure that there is no bug in this proof? So it's, it's, it's an option to define a PVS in deductive and to use deductive just to recheck the proof. And if you don't trust deducti, which is of course a possible, uh, possibility also, just write it yourself. Uh, we have already three implementations of deducti, and writing just a proof checker for deducti, it should be two weeks for a postdoc or two months for a master student. So if you are if you are if you are a certification authority. Uh, you, you have to spend uh, uh, two man, man months to develop your own deductive, and then you can check the PVS proof by yourself. And you have no one to trust. Yes? Regarding the trust, what about the translation from PVS proof to the, into, like the encoding in the document? Okay, so there are two, 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 two different questions. The translation of the propositions, of the statement, then you have to check that in what you get in the end, you have the correct statement. Because if you, correct, if you translate every statement to true, for instance, or to zero is equal to zero, it's very easy to prove. Okay, then the second point is the translation of the proof. Even if the translation of the proof is wrong, but the proof you get in the end is right, you have a proof. <laughs> so it's a, it's a certifying and not a certified translation that you need. But of course, this applies to the proof, not to the definitions, not to the statement that you have to check by hand. Okay, I was speaking of PVS, and in PVS you have an extra feature which is predicate subtyping, and here is how you do it. Uh, and uh, Gabriel will talk about it uh, tomorrow. So uh, I thought I would not have time to do it, but I, I was reluctant to remove the slide, but okay, I don't have time. Okay, so uh, maybe it's time to conclude that we have seen, uh, uh, so you have seen, uh, of course, this picture in uh, Frederick's talk, except that this one is a, a little bit uh, more up to date. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you, you see that we have seen uh, several, uh, uh, let's do 
Sí. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't work. Uh, sorry, I tried. Okay. okay, so you start from here, and we, we remember what we have seen. Now uh, we, we, it's uh, the um, uh, wrap, wrap time. Wrap up time. Thank you. Okay. So we had started with uh, IOTA and prop, and then we have introduced this set IOTA element to, to have a, a generic quantifier. We have added proof to, to have the proof. Of course, we had these two uh, connectors, and uh, one connector and one co quantifier. Uh, then we added the uh, constructive other connectives and quantifiers, then the classical ones. Okay, then we added Omicron and uh, the arrow, the functional arrow to get uh, this simple type theory. Then we have this scheme and uh, the two uh, other quantifiers to have polymorphic uh, simple type theory. Then if you either remove this arrow and replace it with a dependent one and remove this one and replace it with this one or take both, uh, what you get is the calculus of constructions. And here you have what you need for a predicate subtyping. So as Frederick explained, uh, all these uh, symbols, they are interesting in themselves, but there are many situations where you don't want to have them all. So if you want to have predicate, uh, minimal predicate logic, you just need to have this square here. Constructive predicate logic, just pick these cherries. Classical predicate logic, just pick these ones. You have the same for minimal, constructive, classical, simple type theory. This is the calculus of constructions. This is the calculus of constructions with half a universe to have polymorphism on top of, of square. And this is um, uh, simple type theory with predicate subtyping. This is pre uh, simple type theory with polymorphism and predicate subtyping, which is PBS. Okay, so all the proofs you can, uh, uh, you, you can translate from uh, uh, a system to, to deductive will fit in, in one of these theories, but uh, often you don't use uh, all, the, all, all, all the symbols. Then you have the second part of your question. When you have translated uh, a proof to deductive, it's another, it's another business, it's another issue to transform the proof from one theory within deductive to another. And here there are many things you can do. I have given you the very simple example of dependency elimination. So if you can eliminate the dependency, eventually you get a proof in simple type theory, maybe polymorphic if you started from polymorphic, um, uh, uh, the polymorphic calculus of constructions. But also, you can try to replace the classical disjunction with the constructive one. Maybe it will work, maybe not. If the proof is, does not use the excluded middle, but you don't know it because it comes from a classical system, and you don't know that the uh, classical, you have no way to check there if the uh, excluded middle is used or not, maybe if you just replace all your connectors and quantifiers with the constructive ones and you're lucky, you will get a constructive proof from time to time, but not always. Okay. Of course, if you have a genuine classical proof, there is nothing you can do. Okay, so this was for the easy cases, so predicate logic, simple type theory, simple type theory with predicate subtyping, the calculus of constructions. And in the next courses, you will see uh, more advanced features. So first, the uh, universes, universe polymorphism and predicativity, which, which will be in uh, Jesper's and uh, Thiago's course uh, tomorrow. Uh, inductive types, uh, who is going to speak about inductive types? I don't remember, maybe nobody. Uh, there are other examples. Um, yeah, there are many ways to, to encode inductive types. We, we, we can have a discussion offline if you like. Um, there are uh, other examples. Oh, okay, so I know uh, how Bruno will start his, his talk, but I will not spoil it. Well, he will tell you that uh, all these theories, uh, they are a little bit uh, old fashioned. But now we can do also more modern uh, theories. Uh, Catherine and Amélie will uh, show you how you can encode logic that are specific to reason about programming languages and programs. And also in other talks, uh, uh, the uh, idea that I uh, just alluded, just such as interoperability, translating proofs from one system to another, and cross-verification uh, will be uh, more, more, uh, more developed. Thank you. <laughs>